This entitled mum thinks her son is entitled to this man's gaming console because only kids should play video games. She even goes so far to get him arrested. But he has a plan of revenge that will leave them speechless. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. This happened last year. Some brief exposition. Important to know is that I'm South African and we don't have proms here, but we do have metric farewells, which I guess you could call a proms first cousin. I'm just going to refer to it as prom anyway, because it's easier to type. So I'm a photographer and usually around August or September, we get swamped with pre-prom shoots. For in case anyone doesn't know what that is, it basically means that before the event, we meet up with the student and his or her date and take pictures of them. Their families usually join too, to make the job more insufferable. Last year was no exception to the norm, and on one particular day especially, every photographer at my company had been booked and had been sent to different places. I had been hired by a mother to shoot photos of her son and his date, and she had been an absolute joy to deal with, so my dread wasn't anything beyond the regular distaste I felt for these gigs. For this story, I shall refer to her as Nice Mum. I arrived at the location about 10 minutes early and called Nice Mum. She didn't answer. Realizing that I had no idea what anyone looked like, I decided to stay near the entrance and wait for them to call me back. Around me, there was an ocean of couples, all with their own photographers. I'm guessing there must have been at least 50 or 60. I tried calling Nice Mum again. This time, she answered. I told her I was waiting, and she said that they would come find me. I waited for a few more minutes before seeing the cavalry approaching from a distance. The group was considerably larger than I had anticipated, and the woman matching up front looked nothing like I had pictured the mother. Are you OP? She said without saying hello. Her voice sounded different too. Yes, I am, I replied. Are you Mrs. Nice Mom? No, I'm Mrs. Entitled Mother, she said back, already sounding annoyed. Oh, where's Mrs. Nice Mom? I asked. Here I am, Nice Mum yelled out, suddenly appearing from the back. My son and his friends are sharing a car and... I knew you wouldn't mind taking some pictures of us too, Karen cut her off. I rolled my eyes internally. Every year I had at least one person doing this and every year it caused issues. We had actually updated our contract specifically to avoid this from continuously happening. I started explaining the contract to her, but then saw the already defeated look on Nice Mum's face. So not wanting to cause her any embarrassment, I decided to just go with it. Yes, I know, I'm a pushover. Now because there were so many couples doing their shoots at the same venue, and my clients had been a little late, we were rather limited for spots. We were also quite limited for time, as I now had to shoot two couples and two families in the same amount of time. And before anyone asks, it's not because I'm a clock watcher, but because all students were assigned a unique time that they were meant to arrive at the hall, in order to make their grand entrances. I lead Nice Mum's family to the closest available spot spot and told them to align for their photos. Immediately, EM chipped in, pointing at a wooden door close by and asking why we weren't shooting there. Because there are others currently shooting there? I replied with a half annoyed tone. So go tell them to finish because we want to shoot there, EM snapped back. No, thank you, I said, not looking at her as I spoke. I started shooting Nice Mum's family, paying no further attention to EM and completely missing as she waddled over to the other photographer. I had no idea what she said to them, but whatever it was, it must have worked. Because less than two minutes later, she returned and said we could now take the photos at the door. As the door was, admittedly, much prettier and now available, I told Nice Mum and her family to all move there, and we'd quickly retake the photos we'd just taken. When are you doing my family? EM yelled. When I'm done with Nice Family, I replied calmly. You just did them! EM yelled again. I wasn't finished, I replied again. And when are you taking photos of my son and his date? This time I ignored her and just continued taking photos of Nice Family. I finished them rather quickly and then started ushering EM and her family to the spot. Remember to only shoot my good side, EM said. I'll try my best. I said, internally rolling my eyes again. I aligned the family and took the first set of photos, 
before asking the brothers and sisters to fall out. I want to see the photo. Ma'am, we really don't have time. But then how do I know that you know what you're doing if you won't show me the photos? Well, maybe you should have thought of that yesterday. I said, no longer trying to hide my irritation. It took about twice as long as Nice Family. But finally, I finished the family photos. Time was really working against me now. So I started rushing the two couples to follow me. The two couples obeyed and we started walking away. Just for me to see EM following as well. No, you're done. You can just wait here with the rest of the family, I told EM. But how do I know you're going to get enough photos of my son? Well, I can tell you that every moment I'm standing here is a moment I'm not getting photos of him. My irritation was now regurgitating, and I was doing no effort to hide it. Fortunately, nice mom came over and escorted EM away with her. The couple photos were pretty painless, and EM was no longer in sight, and I could therefore focus on the job I was actually there to do. The whole set lasted just under 30 minutes, and I was almost done. The one thing standing between me and my escape was the individual photos of the two boys, and then the photos by the car. I told this to the two boys as we were walking back, telling nice mum's son that I would do him first. Now I'm not sure if this was some sort of candy man effect or what I had said three times, but just as I finished those works, EM suddenly appeared, demanding to know when I'll be taking photos of her son. Right after I do nice son, I said, now relatively calm again. Why does he always get to go first? EM demanded. Because his mother is my client, I said matter-of-factly. Well, you better make sure there are enough photos of my son too. I won't stand for you treating him like he's second best. There were so many reactions that went through my head at that moment, but I bit my tongue and just gave her a smile that would make Harlequin fall in love with me. I spent around four minutes doing nice son's photos and then started looking around for EM's son. I spotted him far away, posing for a group photo with his friends and a different photographer. I walked up to him, telling him it's time for his individual photos. He kind of brushed me away, saying that he'd be with me in a second. The second became a minute, then two minutes, then five minutes. My time was now almost up, so I walked up and asked him again. I got the same answer. Again, I took a step away to wait, only to again be confronted by EM, demanding to know where I was going to be taking photos of her son. I explained to her that I've been trying, but he keeps ignoring me, arrogantly throwing in that I'm just his photographer and not his parent. EM looked at me furiously as I said this, and then demanded I go get him immediately. I obliged walking up to him again, and once more trying to pull him away. This time, he did actually start to follow, but after dragging after me for about 10 feet, ran back again to go pose for a big group photo with all the boys. By the time this was all done, we were officially out of time, and I hadn't shot a single car photo yet. Still, not wanting to awake the beast that was EM, I told him to pose for about a minute, getting the basic shots, before he told me that he really did not want these individual photos. That was good enough for me, so I hurried him over to the car, got some okay photos of him, his date, and the other couple standing in front of it, and then let them leave. I was actually feeling quite proud, having finished everything and going less than 10 minutes into overtime. Cut forward about 10 days later, I had delivered the photos the day before, and nice mum had sent me a message raving about how perfect everything was and how much they loved the photos. I had just pulled my car over at another job when my phone rang. A voice spoke on the other end. Is this OP? This is him, I said, not having a clue who was speaking. This is EM. How can I be of service? Service, I replied, still had no idea who I was speaking to. I'm just going to start by saying that I'm having a really bad day. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I said in a tone asking why she was telling me this. I hired you to take my son's prom photos, EM yelled. My mood plummeted as I suddenly realized who it was. I asked you for one simple thing, and that was for photos of him alone, she said in an eerie tone. There were photos of him alone. Did you not get them? There were five. I'm sorry, how many did you think I was going to include? You have ruined the most important day of his life. To be clear, 
If there were six instead of five, would his life be more complete? I continued, my sarcasm now taking control. What do you plan to do to fix this? Well, I guess I could refund you all the money that you paid, I said jokingly. Darn right you will, EM yelled again. Great, send me your details, I said almost laughing, before hanging the phone up on her. She tried calling me again, but I refused her phone call. I did send her a professional email later just to cover my side, but never got a reply and never heard from EM again. Okay, so what exactly did she think was going to happen with a refund, considering she contributed zero dollars towards the shoot? I mean, theoretically, she might have paid Nice Mom some of the money to like cover the cost, but she wasn't the client Nice Mom was. And the photographer wasn't getting compensated to do the extra work. Anything the photographer gave the mum was purely out of generosity. Sometimes the people who act the most entitled are the ones that have actually been shown a lot of generosity. It's just crazy to think how blind she was to the whole situation. EM probably thought, well the photographer's a pushover so let's see how far I can push. This took place last year in the end of summer while I was waiting for my flight in the airport after a vacation with my family in Italy. The airport was pretty empty that day, despite it was supposed to be trafficked due to the big amount of people coming back from vacations. Anyway, I was playing with my Nintendo to kill some time since my flight was late and I wanted to preserve my phone battery. I forgot the power bank at home. So me, 20, was quietly waiting when this woman, who looked like 40 or younger, and her son, probably 10 judging by height, placed in front of me and started complaining about the flights being late and that she had business, etc. I stopped listening to her because I put on my earphones in an attempt to escape her complaining about this and that. I can't stand listening to complaining that doesn't concern me. Time passes and a notice comes from the speakers saying that my flight was going to be delayed again. Sighing, I put back on my earphones and that's the moment where the show starts. EM comes at me with her kid and asks me something. I remove my ear phones and the conversation goes like this. Excuse me? Yes, do you need something ma'am? Yes please. You see, my kid, EK's name, is getting very bored here. I wondered if you could lend him your video game to let him relax until our flight arrives. Nothing wrong here. But you see, I don't trust random kids since every time I lend something to them, the item returned to me scratched, smudged, or even broken. So it was a, no, I'm sorry, for the little brat. The moment I said no, things started escalating. The tone of the woman changed from polite to arrogant, and the volume had risen, and the kid, who was giving me puppy eyes, started to give me stink eyes. But why? You're not a kid anymore. You look like you're 25 or something, and you still play video games? Why don't you give that toy to my son so he can kill some time? You don't need it this much. To be honest, if the kid would have promised to use it near me and returning to me intact, I could have given up and let him play because he was a kid after all. I know that they become nervous if they don't have anything to do for a while, but the very moment EM started speaking arrogantly, she lost every hope with me. Listen ma'am, I don't lend my stuff to strangers for a matter of principle, so even if you were some famous person, my answer would still be no. Plus, I recommend to lower your voice because people are watching us. I didn't really check if people were watching us, but it was clear by listening to the volume of her voice that anyone would have looked towards us. Well, raising her voice, I don't care if people are watching us. Even better because this way everyone will know how much selfish and childish you are. Not lending a stupid video game to a kid. The conversation was getting out of hand. I could feel the glares of the strangers in the airport looking at me, thinking I'm some sort of a monster. And instead of saying anything that could worsen the situation, I decided to keep calm and go on. Ma'am, the only one acting childish here is you. Lower your voice before someone calls the security on you. The security will be called on you for being an absolute jerk. And when they will arrive, I will have this stupid video game of yours be confiscated, you little crap. I was starting to lose my patience and quietly say, almost grinding my teeth and still not moving from my seat, this conversation is over. Please leave and don't show your face near me again, for your sake. I know that sounded like a threat, but the reaction was as cringe as hilarious. 
Are you threatening me? Oh, you're so messed up. I'm going to report you for threats. I thought the conversation was going to end and that she was going to complain to the manager or something. Typical things that Karens do. It was the first time for me dealing with this type of person. Everything could be fine as long as she leaves me alone. But the real heck starts now. While I was putting my earphones back, the woman snatched them from me. And while I was going to say something, the little turd did something that changed forever my view about kids. He came closer and spit in my shirt. I started seeing red. You little crap. I say while trying to move away the brat with my leg, not trying to kick him or anything. EM screaming like crazy. Don't you dare hurt my son! She starts screaming and asking for help, even screeching that I was mm, her, and someone starts moving in our way in an attempt to stop the tumult. But that wasn't necessary because the little excuse for a human child does something I didn't even think kids were capable of. He punched me in the nuts. That little crap with legs and arms was so malefic to punch a grown man in the nuts. That kid was fully aware of the weak point of a male, yet he did it. Unbelievable. The pain does little except fueling the rage that was boiling in me. I must say, I am a very patient person and all, but when I lose my crap, I don't have any self-control, so it always ends up bad. And that was going to end very badly for both me and them. I stand up from the chair and push away the woman, which starts demonstrating with her son their impressive acting skill. She rolls on the floor screaming, and the little turd has the courage to fake a cry while several people were getting close. I was confused, enraged, and shocked. I never dealt with someone who can be so malefic and shameless. I was literally speechless and frozen in place with my fists closed, while standing still looking at the pathetic show she was giving. I feel someone grabbing my hands and handcuffing them. It was the security guard who clearly misunderstood and judged by the last scenes. He then escorted me to a white room with nothing but a table and started asking me questions after I calmed down. Everything I answered to those questions was, check the camera registration and you'll see. I was frustrated and angered. I didn't want to say anything at all, but I was thankful at the guard too for removing me from that place before I could get my hands on that woman. Something like 20 minutes passed and the guards come back and hands me a bottle of water. He was an understanding person after all, luckily. You can go and forgive me for the cuffs. Your suitcases are in the other room. Would you like to press charges for aggression? I didn't want that Fitch's money and just wanted to go back home without further complications. So I refused, but I had to take a final satisfaction before taking my flight. The speakers announced that my flight was ready. So before I go, I reach out to the Karen and her son, who was standing in the seat I was in earlier, quietly like nothing happened. I tap a kid on the shoulder and say, I think this belongs to you. You need it more than me, I say while bringing out the Nintendo. The moment I bring out the console, the little turd's eyes became like cat eyes when they are in the dark, and her mother grinning in satisfaction as she thinks she obtained what she wanted. Heck no. Little did she know, before handing it to him, I snapped it into two pieces, and I get a taste of their shocked faces. I dump the broken console on the legs of the little brat as I take my leave, hearing pointless talks in my back. It was the worst experience of my life, and made me discover that kids can be devils too. And I couldn't end it giving a win to that pathetic woman and her son. Single mothers who think everything must get the world upside down just because they say it. When I think about it, I get overwhelmed with anger and disappointment. But then I think about the sweet revenge. I still can't believe it. And when I read that there are other similar persons, my feels goes to whoever has to deal with these pieces of crap. I gotta say, that's some pretty extreme revenge to snap your own console just to rub it in their face. I don't think I would do that, but man, the look on their face would have been priceless. It's just so shocking that people like this think they can get away with stuff. I'm glad it ended up okay for this guy and he didn't stay arrested, but really, they arrested the wrong person. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.